This episode of Film Ride is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Ride, we're talking about run and gun guerrilla filmmaking. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques of one of some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley, and today I figure we'll talk about run and gun filmmaking since I just had a refresher course in the run and gun guerrilla style filmmaking. I mean, Film Riot is a run and gun show on a weekly basis, but what we do, I don't consider short films. I consider them these small little sketches, very simple sketches, totally different than a full on short film like A Tell, A Losses, or Now Proximity. And we wrote and shot this thing in 10 days, like I told you guys before. And doing a short film, unlike a Film Riot sketch, is so much more complicated. I mean, you got the wardrobe, you got a diff different cast, you got characters that have to maintain continuity throughout the film. You have to have it visually make sense. You're shooting it out of order because there's no way to shoot it chronologically, so you have to make everything make sense from point A to point B continuity-wise. There is so much more to keep in mind. One of the biggest difficulties being how you shoot the thing. So I figured we'd take today to talk about that. Some of the pitfalls, some of the things that I conquer during the run and gun and some of the things that conquer me usually during the run and gun. So let's, shall we? So the last time we did a run and gun short film like this, which was actually even more run and gun than this one was, was Losses. And I really loved Losses. I thought it was a lot of fun to do, a lot of fun to watch. You guys seemed to dig it, but there were some major things that I just hate about losses, and I have no problem being honest about it. I mean, it was last minute, so we didn't have much of a choice of some of it, but there are some things that I wish I could go back and redo, and those big three things are location, cast, and wardrobe. First, with the location, I mean, we were working with what we had, but I should have catered a script more towards that location instead of just done whatever I want. I mean, that location did not look like the type of place where something like that would be going down. I mean, that looked more like a, a youth facility of some kind than what we used it for. Second was cast. I mean, I'm so thankful for everybody to come out and help out. And there was a few people that definitely fit their roles like Nick and Todd, but Josh was too young to do the role that he did, although he was epic in it. I wish he was looked like what he looks like now, then. You know what I'm saying? I'll take it. Because now you look, now you could do it. But then you look like a kid. I did. I look like a baby. But you still kicked some butt to your credit. And all the bad guys did not look like bad guys. I think somebody said they all look like they stepped out of an Abercrombie and Fitch catalog. Funny <laughs> and true. But it was a lot of fun to make that short film. But those things, oh, and the wardrobe. Nobody was dressed like a bad guy. Nobody was dressed to their, I mean, you were, and Todd was, and Nick was, but everybody else, well, was wearing what they showed up that day in, not knowing they were going to be in the short film. So those big three things, I think, shot losses in the leg. The location, the cast, and the wardrobe. So when you're doing a run and gun thing, make sure you, you spend extra attention to those, because once you're shooting, you're not going to have time for any workarounds. You're just going to need to go with it, and those are either going to really help you take that to the next level, or really, really hurt your film. Next up is makeup. Makeup is a big one, and if you're smart, unlike me, you'll write something that doesn't have a ton of special effects makeup in it or blood. That way, all you really need to worry about is powdering up your actors so they don't look greasy and look pretty for the camera. And in that case, just get somebody and train them real quick on what they need to do. Have them do some tests for the camera before you shoot. And if, especially if you're gonna do special effects, makeup and blood, definitely have a designated person. I had my sister who did tell, so that was already pretty locked in for me. But really just get someone who is okay with makeup, usually a girl since they already know how to use it. Have them do some tests on your actors before you shoot and then have them be the designated makeup person for the entire time. So they're just focusing on all the gear for the makeup and keeping continuity with the actors with the makeup because once you're there there's going to be no more time for figuring things out they need to do all the tests before time be that designated person so once you're on set you could just run another one is props and this one can help you big time this is one area that you can use to your advantage to make it look like you spent a lot more time and a lot more effort into getting this film off the ground than you actually did i have two pieces of props within this film that I purposefully put in there to make it, again, feel like we had a lot more planning and time put into this than we did. So props is definitely one 
area that's easy enough to go out and find some stuff that will increase your production value on something like this. So the last two and most difficult things is the schedule and the shot list. And there's some of the most important things too, but ones that I skimped on the most, the schedule was really the only thing I did in, I guess the pre-production phase, which there really wasn't one. And that was just to go through the script and decide when we were gonna shoot each scene on a certain day. I made sure to shoot every scene together. So I would break them up on when I know I could, I could cut them and make them their own scene. And then I would put those on the days that I had to, usually because of the actor that we needed in the scene or a certain area of the location for a certain time of day or a look that I wanted. A lot of the actors could only come during the weekend, so that was something to consider as well. But the main thing to consider and to keep in mind when doing something like this is you're probably not gonna have a bunch of different types of wardrobe that you need. So say if your actor midway through the film gets cut across the chest and there's a ton of, ton of blood and you mess up that wardrobe, now that's how that wardrobe is. You need to make sure you shoot everything before you get there, not after. That way you don't have a continuity nightmare. I mean, even if you do have double shirts, it's really better to do that so you you can just stay with the continuity without having to think about that back and forth and you're gonna probably end up messing something up with running gun. So that was my main consideration was just putting it around the location, the actors, but also continuity, making sure we did everything before things switched on the wardrobe or the actor's look in general. And then there's a shot list, which I really didn't spend a lot of time in pre-production at or any time actually for that matter. I did the shot list in the morning before we did our shoot. I used Shot Lister and I was able to make up all my shots and then easily organize them for how I wanted the shoot day to go, which we were able to stick to for a few days and Shot Lister really, I, I can't suggest that app enough. It really makes it easy to do your days that way. But there were a lot of days where I just had to show up, throw out the shot list altogether. I mean, we were moving so fast that there was no longer any time to even look at the shot list anymore. I had to just run between shots, which was mostly the fight scenes, but I would still suggest putting together a shot list for that day because I had a foundation to work from. I just, I wasn't just pulling it out of my butt. I had the initial intention of how I wanted that scene to go already in my head. So I, you know, had that visualization of how it should be playing out already pre-planned. So it was a lot easier to just make it up as I went since I was again, already pulling it from an initial idea. Mm. Put it down, mm -mm. put it down. Mm -mm. It's my coffee break. Everybody gets one. Mm. If you want to run it, if you want me Your to run and guide you. Out. That's embarrassing. And the last thing to keep in mind is that everything takes a lot longer than you think. No matter how many times I do this, I always still underestimate how long it's gonna to take to do something, especially when it comes to a fight scene or something like that. It may be only 30 seconds of screen time, but it's very complicated, so it's going to take you a couple of hours at least. So just keep that in mind. Whatever you think it's gonna take, I would say double or triple it. But now we're gonna do some sponsor action and then we're gonna to talk to Todd about acting because I thought it was pretty interesting as far as what it is to direct an actor and what it must be for an actor to work in a short film like this since they are used and abused. So I figure we'll talk to Todd and see what he has to say about it. But first, that sponsor. Domain.com is a place that you can get things on the internets to be a business or a filmmaker and be seen by people. Did that make sense? That made, that made more sense than sense itself. Wow. I'm impressive. You should get yourself a .net. It infuses your website with instant credibility. You'll see all the benefits from using a .net. Plus, if you got a .com, you should get the .net anyway. Get some synergy, some brand recognition and protection happening. And .nets from domain.com are only $8.99 a year. That's crazy affordable, and we can make it more so by using the coupon code FILMRIOT at checkout. You get 15% off your domain name and your web hosting. Holy Toledo! Whoa, language. Sorry. Can I tell you something? What? Domain.com, the it's, portal to greatness on the great internet. Tagline. Thank you. Domain.com, the portal to greatness. <laughs> Logo. So another thing with proximity that I, that got me thinking was working with an actor and directing actors because of how crazy this was. There were times where I found myself frustrated that I wasn't working with you guys the way that I wanted to because, well, there was just no choice. We just had to move. So I was curious to hear your perspective of the shoot as an actor to try to learn from that as a director, but I didn't want to talk to you about it until we had the camera on. Uh, of course. So it was all, all fresh and, and spontaneous. So for me, it was a little frustrating. So my first question is, for me, it was a bit frustrating to not work with you guys. Was it frustrating for you, the lack of connection that you had with me during the shoot? I wouldn't say frustrating. It was challenging, for sure. 
Um, but one of the things I'm constantly trying to do is work on my ability to adapt. So I, um, I knew what was coming. I knew the kind of shoot it was going to be. Not quite to the extent, but um, I was sort of prepared to adapt to the run and gun style. Right. And how much of that had to do with the fact that we're so tight? Like if, if you had never worked with me before... It would have been much more difficult. Right. Yeah. Um, if you and I didn't have this like shorthand communication that we've developed, it would have been much more and difficult. And trust. And trust. Because as much it, as you're trusting me, I'm trusting you. Because I can't focus on all the little nuances I need you to hit. So I'm just trusting that you're doing your own work as we go to find your motivation so the, the performance rings true in the end. Right. Because I can't focus on all of it. Right. Right. Yeah, the trust that goes both ways, that's really important. Because I need to be able to trust you to guide me in the moment because I don't know what's coming next. Right. And there were a couple scenes where I literally did not know what was coming next. So I, And if you look at the footage, you can hear him actually telling me in the background what to do next. Right. So, But if you don't have that trust, it makes it really difficult. So, and just be completely honest because I just want to learn from it too. Um, as far as me directing you went, what were the things that I did the most wrong for you? Like, what, what were you wishing I was doing that I wasn't doing uh, on a shoot like this? Which, again, this is kind of a bad example because this was so intense. I mean, there were moments where him and Josh were almost going to throw up because I wasn't giving them any breaks because we just... And the only reason I was able to push them that far is because Josh is my brother and Todd is like a brother. So you couldn't do that on a normal show. I would yeah. never do that with anyone else. temporary. Film is forever. Film is forever, right. <laughs> and it, it's just a bad way to operate. But for the most... Leaving out those insane moments, mm. the normal run and gun moments what what were some of the things that you were wishing were happening for you as an actor that that wasn't mm. um he's not exaggerating by the way there were actually a couple moments where josh and i were about to throw up forced um, breaks yes yeah um but uh, i guess the the biggest thing that sticks out of my mind is i wish i'd had a l more time to prepare uh for which means more communication from me of what's coming for you to sit with that moment and that character and that yeah i, I guess not necessarily more communication but more advanced notice. Gotcha. But I, at the same time, I realized that wasn't really possible because we were sort of... Yeah, I didn't know what was coming next. Ex exactly. Yeah. And that was a combination of... Uh, caused largely by circumstance. I mean, we got rained out and lost almost a whole day. So would it have helped... Because I didn't know what was coming next, but I, I had a roundabout. Would it have helped if I would have said, you know, I'm not sure what's next, but it's either going to be this, this, or this? That way you knew it was one of the three? Or yeah. is that still not very helpful? That would have helped, yeah. Because then I could at least prepare for all three as much as possible. Right. Um, Instead of just being completely in the dark. Right. 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 Um, and as it was, there are a couple scenes that I wish I had done differently, thinking back on it and looking back on it now. Yeah. Uh, that, or, or that I, I could have done more. Um, There's shots that I wish I would have thought right. to get. <laughs> so right. I'm, I'm with you there. So now, uh, I mean, this is sort of similar to what we just said. Now I'm wondering, what would your advice be for, I mean, because it's a little bit different because, again, we're so tight. What would your advice be, like, thinking that if you were going to do a production with somebody like this that wasn't me, that you were pretty new to working, what would your advice to that guy be to work with an actor like yourself, you know, to make this process, you know, as easy as possible and to keep mm. the actors on their side, to keep from having like a mutiny on set from, from intense work like this? Yeah, um, yeah pr prepare as much as you can, even though it's run and gun, prepare, 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 so that you can tell your actors as much as possible what they're in for on a given shooting day. I know it's difficult, but the more advanced notice you give your actors, the better performances you're gonna get. Second thing, communication is vital. The better you can communicate with, with your actors, the better idea they have what you want from them and the more able they are to give it to you. Yeah, and I would say from a director's standpoint, the prepare thing would just be, you know, for me in the morning, it was just the scenes that I knew I was gonna do, just replaying them over and over and over in my mind, just playing it out so I see all the shots, I see all the character moments, I know what all, what all the characters are thinking and feeling and doing in every moment, so when we get to that moment, I know exactly what they need uh, to be doing in the moment. Is all Again, it's just answering quickly and confidently. But now for an actor, say there's an actor that's gonna go into a run and gun bit, what would be your one bit of advice for them to, to mm. handle a situation like that? Be prepared for anything. Be adaptable, be ready to do any part of the script that is on a page, be ready to do it at, at any moment. That's the best thing you can do. Uh, and trust your, your director, you have to. In, in a run and gun shoot, you have got to trust your director. Whether you have built a relationship or not, you have to give that trust to them. Yeah, that's a good point because when people start questioning too much, it just slows it down. It grinds it to a halt. Yeah. yeah. 
But, you know, that's all on me. I need to get my crew and cast to trust me. And once I've done that job, then it's smooth sailing. Yeah. It, it, it's a give and take, though. You have yeah. to give the trust and, and earn it at the same time. So there you go. Trust, love, and... Happiness. Happiness. <laughs> Logo. So that's it for today. Hopefully that was helpful. I know there's a lot of pitfalls when it comes to doing run and gun filmmaking. Those are the biggest ones that I have found and am trying to conquer. So if you have any questions, you can shoot them to me on Twitter. If you think I forgot something and you would you would like to know what it is. I'm trying to get back on the interwebs, Josh. Get back on them From interwebs. From outsiders in proximity, I've been so busy that I haven't been able to talk to people on the Twitterverse. But now I'm back. I'm back. With a vengeance. I'm going to be trying to be back because I'm still really busy. So if I haven't answered you, I'm sorry. I'm trying. But that's it for today. I'll see you guys. want to see you guys. Peace out.